fluency varies definition with every person learning a language. So in this video, I'd like to define what is this fluency that I'm trying to pursue with Japanese. Hello everyone. I've been living in Japan for over 10 years now and I've been studying Japanese on and off. Sometimes I, for a long time, I'm not able to study because of work. Sometimes because I'm just so sick of it for over 10 years, there are ups and downs in studying Japanese. But recently, uh, two months before, just two months, today is um, November 2024. In October and September, yes, I've been building habits to increase my time spent in studying Japanese outside work. I'm immersed at work, but it's not, it's, work is no study time, yes. But after work and on weekends, and I make videos in Japanese so I can practice and share some of my journey in this language acquisition journey. But what is this fluency that is so desired by language learners? Well, apparently, according to Google, fluency is smoothness of delivery, of speaking. It's an output thing, fluency. So if you're continuous in your explanation or in your speech in a foreign language or in a language, that is fluency. It's an output thing. And there's another word, proficiency, that is related with fluency. What's the difference? Proficiency is the accuracy of how you express yourself in a language. Fluency is the smoothness of speech and proficiency is the accuracy of expression. So proficiency can be written in a written form, but Fluency is in spoken language. So that is how Google defined it to me. And apparently, it's not exactly what I want. <laughs> so let me explain. In this, for this video's purposes, I'm going to mix up proficiency and, efficient, and fluency. I'm trying to, I'm giving you a definition of how, what I want to achieve in the language that I call fluency. So how do I define fluency? Well, I look back in a language, in a foreign language that I'm already fluent in, which is English, one I'm using now. And in English, why do I say I'm fluent? It's because I understand everything. That's it. I understand the movies, I understand songs, I understand the news, I understand debates, I understand TV, I understand books, everything. I understand everything in English, except for very heavily jargon words like medical terms maybe, or maybe very technical terms in IT, or some other specific fields. I may encounter a word that I don't know. I don't always look at the dictionary to know them. I as long as I get the gist of what is going on in a context, that's why I consider myself fluent. I never considered myself fluent because I can speak the language. Speaking in English is not a big thing to me. I uh, have very little opportunity to use English as an output or to communicate with native speakers or to communicate with other people who speak English as well. I mostly encounter English through input. It's my, when I watch movies, when I read, when I watch YouTube, when I learn a language, when I'm trying to get tips on how to learn a language, they're all in English. That's how I consider myself fluent because I understand everything. And speech, just came after words. Yes. I do remember a time I'm having difficulty with speech and thinking that I wish I can express myself in English like I can express myself in Tagalog, my mother tongue. In 2012, I took the IELTS in English and my results were awesome. I had perfect scores in reading and listening. All input. I understand everything. I had an 
8 over 9 score in writing, which is pretty high. I used to write a lot in school in English and I, I used to be an essay writer. So I could very well express myself in writing in English. And, but the lowest of my scores is this um, the speaking part, which is, I think I got a score of 7.5. So that was the lowest. It, it was not low per se, but it was the lowest of my score. Uh, my weakest skill in English is speaking because it's, it's the least that I use. That's obvious. If I want to speak more fluently or if I want to speak, if I want to improve my speaking skills, I have to speak more. That's the idea. So, but it doesn't matter to me. I, I'm very well satisfied with my English skills, my comprehension skills, my mastery of the language in English. Um, other other things like being articulate, being be able to communicate, or, or being able to be persuasive in a in a speech. There, they are extra skills for me. They're not language skills anymore. There are techniques in communication. And that's what I'm trying to improve in my YouTube videos, yes, to communicate better. So that is not a language thing. It's not fluency to me. I'm fairly satisfied with my fluency in English. So that's fluency in English. And that is how I compare my fluency in Japanese. When I stu started studying Japanese, I realized that I was very good at expressing myself in English. I have now something to compare to. I didn't make speech an important process in my learning English, in my mastering English, or in the strictest term, fluency. Fluency is not what I aspire to, or my definition of fluency is, fluency is very different. Fluency is just me understanding everything in the language. And that is my goal in Japanese. After. 10 years, more than 10 years, almost 15 years of living in Japan, I'm still having trouble understanding everything. I don't know all the kanji. I don't know under, I don't understand them. When the conversation is very fast, I can't follow. There are a lot of words that I don't understand in the language still. My office mates needs to speak slowly and clearly to me for me to understand something. And sometimes even if I know a word, I won't realize what they're saying to me immediately. It's, it's very much a struggle still. And I still have a long way to go and see. Yes, in Japanese. That is something that I aspire to. In Japanese, I'm basic. I'm a basically fluent. I can express myself in some sense. I can make a video in Japanese. I have lots already now. <laughs> I've been making videos in Japanese, but uh, my Japanese is still, I think it's very bad. <laughs> some Japanese people, I thank them. They try to get through all my videos. It's very nice of them. <laughs> they try to understand it. They try to give me tips on how to improve my Japanese, but in my Japanese, the fluency that I'm after is comprehension. The how to to understand everything. That's it. I don't care if I don't talk perfectly in Japanese because I think with my experience with English, talking in English or talking in Japanese will follow if I understand everything. At this moment, I don't understand everything yet and I can already talk. So. I think it will just improve with time. My fluency will just improve in time if I can, in time, understand more and more of the language. So that is fluency to me. But how am I gonna achieve this fluency? I made this video on how to pursue fluency or how to improve in the language. It's in Japanese, but I made subtitles so you'll still understand it. So. That's it for this video. Thank you for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Bye.